Okay, that should give you a little bit better view. So let's take and strip off again about six millimeters of this guy. And just give a little bit of twist. Now this is going to go into, uh, although it's black, it's contradictory. This is going to go into the same side as the red on this one. So it is going to go in here, which that needs to be loosened up first. It's going to go in there like so. Yeah, I'm just going to give it a little bit of tightness to grab it and then we're going to hold this connector with our fingers or they suggest in the manual to use pliers because you don't want that to wiggle otherwise you'll break the solder connections and cause you to buy a new duet board so you want to fight any turning there okay that guy is done now we're going to take the red one this was the long red one that was off of the hot end whip here. And we're gonna kind of feed it back through a little bit. This is our short red one that we just put on. Nope, uh, this is the short red one. So we're gonna run that underneath these other cables as well, follow the same path. Just to try to keep it tidy. And we don't have as much slack with this guy, so you do want to make sure you have enough room. It's going over to here. You'll get a little bit more room once this is up into position, but for now that'll do it. In fact, let me, let me go over the river and through the woods. We're going to go a different path. Okay, that gets us over to there. Now let's strip back a small section of this. Like so. Just give it a little twist and that's going to go into the second hole which is closed. So we need to open this guy and you want to hold the connector to keep it from twisting. Let's open it up. Let's feed that in there. Tighten it down. Keep the connector from twisting with our fingers and give it a little tug. Okay, now at this point we can take and put this face plate on. So let's slide this over and do that now. We'll take this guy off. That is going to go like so. And we're just going to use the 10 32nd screws to hold it on. So let me go ahead and grab those. We we'll use that to hold it temporarily. Okay, so this is going to use the 10 30 seconds socket cap screws. So I'm just going to go ahead and get those started. Now there's no nut on the other side. This is just going to thread into the plastic, the injection molded plastic. Okay, you don't want to over tighten those, just enough so that they're snug. And then of course, as always, go back and finish them off by hand, like so. Okay, now all our wiring is officially done at the top end. Should you care to, you could go through and try to lace up the cabling a little more if you want to, but 
I kind of want to leave it as is for now because I want to make sure that everything powers up and is correct and then I can always tidy that up later. So our last step is that piece that we left off is going back and fitting the top on this. So let me go ahead and grab that and we'll put that on. Okay, so it's going to take 12 of the 632 screws, like so. I'm going to line up the Z with the Z tower, the X with the X and the Y with the Y. And just like all of the other pieces, it's just going to need to get fitted down into place and snapped in. And then we'll screw it down once it fits in. Wow, that was probably one of the worst time lapses ever. My apologies for it jumping all over from camera to camera as I tried to keep things in frame, but getting this top part on was kind of a pain in the butt. So anyway, moving along here, remember we took these two fuses out here. There's the 5 amp and the 15 amp. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and put those in. So the 5 amp is going to go for the hot end and you just push it in and twist to lock. And the same thing for the 15 amp for the heat bed. There we go. And just push to lock that in, both of those in. Okay, the last thing for part 12 of the video here, just so we can completely finish up the top, is to assemble the easy R extruder or the extruder and get that mounted up here on this other side. Let me rotate that for you. The easy R extruder is going to go get mounted right here. So let me go ahead and pause it quick, grab the parts for that and let's knock that out. Okay, so we're going to need the easy R plate and this is probably upside down for you guys, but that's all right. Um, you guys can live with that, right? You're going to need the EZR extruder, the stepper motor, and then you're going to need the M3 screws, the 632s and the two lock nuts, as well as the, um, the doohickey for turning it, and the hob gear, like so, and the little silver Allen key that's included in there. Tools wise, you're going to need a number one and a number two screwdriver. So let's see how this is going to go together. So we're going to start off with the stepper from the back, like so. The easy R is going to fit over the top like this, and you're going to want to snip that little wire tie with a pair of flush cuts. Going to use these 632 screws here to hold that on. Let's just get them all started to make sure they all line up. Sorry, not the 632, the M3. Like so. Gonna give that a little push on the side there just to make sure it wiggles. Okay, now we're going to drop that all the way down. Drop our two 632s through. They should go all the way through to the other side of the laser cut piece. And should put a nylon lock nut on each of those. We're just going to get I'm going to use my little needle nose vice grips 
just to hold the nut and we're going to tighten those up okay that is assembled and on now you're going to install the hob gear and you're going to install the hob gear with the the grub screw, the set screw towards the stepper like so and you can push that in if you need to to let it roll down. You're going to want to make sure that the track lines up with the filament path there and with the set screw at the top. You want to make sure that the set screw on this one is not hitting the flat because it's too short and too small. So you want to hit the round and then you just want to tighten that up. You're going to have a significant amount of stepper sticking out the side there. Okay, and now that should loosen up. Just for fun and games, we'll stick our Allen key through there and you can watch it turning the stepper. Now if you want to have fun, this is where this is flat on one side. You can go ahead and take the knob, make sure it's lined up with the flat, and push the knob on there. Okay, now you want to going to take and unwind the stepper cable, motor cable. Like so and like so. And we're going to go back up here to the top. Okay, so now this is going to end up here. So let's feed this cable through. Let's set this guy on top. We're going to feed this cable up through here. And that is going to plug in in the next step. So let's just leave this cable off to the side. For now, this is going to go on here, like so. And we're going to use two of the same hex heads that we used for the other piece to tighten that down. Finish off the last couple turns by hand. Just to make sure that we don't crush that melamine and it's good. Okay, now we can jump down to 51, which is actually where we're at. And this is going to plug in up here on the top. So let's move the camera up here. And it's going to plug in here. The color coding should be the same. Red, green, yellow, white. Like so. You can take and tuck this cabling down here out of the way. And again, if you want to, you can tidy those up with the zip ties that you have left. Uh, for me, for now, I'm just going to pull them over out of the way. It's not really obstructing anything. It just doesn't look tidy, but it's fine for now. Okay, so in this segment, we installed the fuse panel, got it wired up. We put the top on and we installed the Easy R Struder or Easier Struder. Got it wired up and got the little shiny face knob on here. We are done with the top, with the exception of going back and cleaning up some wiring after we verify it works and putting the rest of the trim pieces on. We are done with the top. So in the next video, we're going to move back down to the base and we're going to finish wiring up the power supply and the rest of the power circuit, the switches and the IEC plugs and stuff. So that's it for today. Again, a special thanks goes out to CME CNC for providing the Rostock Max V3.2 for me to build in this build series. And if you're not subscribed, please feel free to subscribe and ring that bell so you get notified when the next segment of the series is out, as well as our other videos. And we'll see you next time on Practical Printing. Aloha.